Ed and Costello program. Listen to the rhythm of Will Osborne and his orchestra, the great song styles of Connie Haynes and Bob Matthews. And that happy, heavy, hippie little horseman, who, when asked to pick the winner of the Kentucky Derby, glanced at his racing form and calmly said... the dream from my eyes I'll tell my heart it mustn't sing the song of remembrance So just say that I'm a friend of yours, that you happen to me again. Just say I'm a There you are, Costello. I've been looking all over for you, all week. I telephoned your house Tuesday night, and somebody answered and said you were taking a bath. You know I'm lost already? I did the beginning. <laughs> I did the right. Somebody. <laughs> Look, never mind. This is, no... this is no kidding. Somebody deliberately told me that you were taking a bath. Somebody told, said that I was taking a bath? Yeah, I called up Tuesday night. Tuesday night? Yes. Brother, did you have the wrong number? Uh, well, <laughs> well, look, my wife said she saw you in a tattoo parlor on Main Street this morning. What were you doing in a tattoo parlor? Well, I got lost for my girlfriend, Tessie Tinfoil. Yes. You know, the one that's in the army? Yeah. So I had a picture tattooed on my back. You had Tessie's picture tattooed on your back? Oh, yeah. Sure. And I had me tattooed on my chest. Look. See it? Wait a minute, Costello. I don't see you on your chest. Am I back there with Tessie again? <laughs> Talk says, Costello. I understand that Tessie is going to get out of the army next week. Oh, that's right, Abbott. And she's going back to her old job posing for a designer. He uses Tessie's knees for models. He uses Tessie's knees for models? Uh, wh what does he design? Doorknobs. Hey, uh, door... <laughs> Wait a minute. Costello. <laughs> Costello, just a minute. Turn around. Let me see that picture of Tessie on your back. Go ahead. Turn around. Aha! Uh -huh, I thought so. She's knock kneed Tessie is not knock -kneed. Well, her knees are touching. She just stands that way because she hasn't got any garters. I, uh... <laughs> Look, Costello, if you... <laughs> Costello, if you're so crazy about Tessie, why don't you marry her? Well, I, I, I don't believe in marriage, Abbott. Marriage is like soup. Marriage is like soup? Sure, by the time you get through spooning, it cools off. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's ridiculous. Well, always, Abbott. You know, I, I, I don't know if Tessie wants to marry me or not. You see, she's also in love with nine other guys. Tessie is in love with you and nine other guys? Yeah. You should have been there the day Tessie left for the army. What do you mean? It was beautiful. The ten of us chipped in and bought her an engagement ring. <laughs> Wait a minute. I understand you had a little spat with Tessie before she left. Well, what was it about? She got mad at me because I stole a kiss. Oh, now that's silly. Why should Tessie get mad because you stole a kiss? I stole it from her sister. I... <laughs> And you know something? That's the first girl I kissed since I well, since last Christmas. Oh, Costello, you mean that from last Christmas till now you've kissed just one girl? How do you come for that? Oh, I guess I'm just a wolf. <laughs> I can't control myself. I can see that. I'm a cat. I'm lower 
I'm a cad. I'm an old Studebaker. <laughs> with no fog lights. All right. Good. Just cut that out, oh. Costello. The trouble with you is that you wear your heart on your sleeve. That's a lie. I might, I might have a little liver and onions on my vest and a smudge of tapioca on my trousers, but I ain't got no heart on my sleeve. No, no, Costello. I only meant that you are fickle. I'm what? You're fickle. Fickle. I never touch the stuff. <laughs> I've never been fickled in my life. Now, look. I'm not referring to drinking. I'm referring to love. Do you know what love is? Oh, sure. Little pigeons make love. Butterflies make love. Yes. Oysters make love. Yeah. Now, uh, wait a minute. Oysters make love. You'd be surprised what goes on inside them shells. Now... <laughs> Costello, you don't appreciate romance. You know, you don't, really, Lou. You don't, you don't appreciate romance at all. Oh, when I was courting my wife, there was a big grandfather's clock in the living room. And we used to sit and listen to it tick, and it said, Take your time, take your time, take your time. Yeah, but things are different now, Abbott. Today, when a fellow sits in Apollo with his girl, there's an alarm clock on the mantel that says, Get together, get together, get together, get together, get together. Get together, get together. Uh, I'll never figure that old grandfather's clock. <laughs> It's a great memory, though, Lou. That old grandfather's clock. The day we were married, it stopped. Stop? Yep. <laughs> Your wife must have looked at it. I guess... Uh, yeah, wait a minute. Are you insinuating that my wife's face would stop a clock? Well, it ain't running, is it? it... <laughs> Look, forget about the clock, Costello. What happened to your romance with that tall, red-headed girl? Oh, you mean lean against her? Yes. Oh, well... <laughs> we're married and happy. Married and happy? Yeah, she's married and I'm happy. <laughs> well, I'm glad she married somebody else. The only reason you wanted to marry her was... For her money. Well, marrying for money is better than getting married for no reason at all. Uh, Costa, when I married my wife, everyone said it was a perfect match. Match is right. She struck you and you went out like a light. <laughs> well, at least I'm not henpecked. Henpecked? Before you were married, you used to snore in your sleep. Now you cackle. No, no, no. no that's not true. Before I was married, everything was lovely. I, I'd sneak into the parlor and I'd catch her in my arms. Now you're sneaking into the bedroom and catch her in your pockets. I... <laughs> oh, forget about my marriage, Costello. I'd like to get you straightened out. Now, Tessie Tinfoil is not the girl for you. Tessie is uh, too, uh, blasé. Too what? Blasé. Uh, Tessie's too blasé. Blasé. She's got more than two blasés. Tessie's got a red blasé and a green blasé. <laughs> and she's got a yellow blasé. She wears them with her, ch her checkered shirt skirt <laughs> under the coat of her suit No, 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 no. There's no, no. too many No, 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 no. I don't understand you, dummy. When I say she's blasé, I mean uh, Tessie's sophisticated. Sophisticated? That's right. How do you like that? And she promised... To me that she'd stay on the wagon. Listen, you imbecile, please. When I say a girl's blasé, I'm not referring to her clothes. Anyone who is blasé is sophisticated, and sophisticated has nothing to do with being inebriated. It merely means that a person has reached a degree of sophistication, where he or she becomes blasé. Oh, when you say a girl's blasé, you're not referring to her clothes. No. And anyone who is blasé is sophisticated. And sophisticated has nothing to do with being inebriated. It merely means that a person has reached a degree of sophistication where he or she becomes blasé. Now you've got it. Now I've... I don't even know what I'm talking about! Get him out of me! And now here's that romantic Bob Matthews. I don't care who knows it. I'm in love with you. Nothing you do or say could ever change me. I for you forever. You're my whole life. I don't care who knows it. I'm in love with you. I'm for you forever. Just your.
now that's how I am And I don't care who knows it I'm in love with you Let them say what they will Dear, I love you still And I don't care day to go to the beach. Oh, yes. If we had a telephone call, we could call up some girls. If we had a nickel. And if we knew any girls. There you go again. Girls, girls, girls. Can't you think of anything better than girls? There's something better. Oh, look, Costello. <laughs> hey, there's Connie Haynes. Why don't you ask her if she'd like to go to the beach? Okay. Oh, Connie! Connie! Hey, Connie, how would you like to go to the beach with me, huh? Well, Mr. Costello, honey, I don't know if I should. I suppose you all want to teach me how to swim? Oh, nothing like that. <laughs> Well, uh, you all won't try to hold my hand? Oh, you know me better than that, Connie. And you won't hug me or kiss me? Oh, gee, Willikers, no. I mean, after all, I... I, 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 <laughs> I promise I won't. Then what are we going for? Then what are we going for? <laughs> We're going for something. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Costello, honey. All right, honey. Well, Costello, he... kid murders me. Ah, wait a minute. <laughs> You certainly got turned down fast by Connie. Well, maybe she saw because I broke a date with her Saturday night. I was supposed to meet her at 7 o'clock. What happened? I waited around till 11. She didn't come, so I just stood her up. That's all. <laughs> I wish Connie would go to the beach with us because she's, she's got the cutest bathing suit. What is it like? It's made of two pieces of string held together by a handkerchief. <laughs> well, it's too bad Connie's not going. Come on, get your trunks, Costello, and let's go to the beach. 
My trunks? Yes. Why should I take my trunks? I don't want to move. I just want to go swimming. <laughs> well, you swim in trunks, don't you? I do not. I swim in the water just like anybody else. Uh, never mind. I'll rent you a swimming suit. Uh, would you wear a uh, rented suit? That depends where it's rented. And the size of the rent. No, no. Come on, Chris. <laughs> Let's get started. I'll get some lotion to rub on you so you won't uh, sunburn. Oh, you don't have to worry about me, Abbott. I never burn. I just take a nice, healthy, even blister. <laughs> Well, come on, Costello, there's nobody around, so get into your suit. Ah, uh, isn't the beach beautiful? Just look at the birds flying over the water. Oh, I wrote a poem about them birds. I'll recite it. Go ahead. A wonderful bird is the seagull, which can fly quite as high as an eagle. They sit on the sand, and sometimes they stand, but you can't tell a he from a she-gull. <laughs> hey, hey, Costello, here comes a cop. This is a private beach. You can't swim here. It's against the law. Well, why didn't you tell me before I got undressed? Well, there's no law against undressing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let's go. Look, let's go. Let's go over behind those ropes, Costello. That's the public beach. <laughs> Look at that beautiful redhead. I'm going with her and teach her to swim. Suppose she knows how to swim. Then I'll let her teach me. <laughs> hey, Eric, give me my pail and shovel. Right here is a spot where I covered Ruby pool cue up with the sand last Sunday. Well, what do you want your shovel for now? Well, I figure it's about time to dig her up. I love Costello. Hey, look at that fat lady in that rubber bathing suit. Oh, them rubber ba- bathing <laughs> suits. They're made for fat ladies. They, they got a five-way stretch. Five-way stretch? Yeah, up and down, back and forth, and a shelf to take care of the surplus. I... <laughs> hey, Costello, look at the man over there feeding donuts to his horse. Can you imagine that? Hey, you mister, what's the idea of giving all them donuts to your horse? I just wanted to see how many he'll eat before he asks for a cup of coffee. <laughs> hey, what are you doing on the beach with that horse? Well, you see, I came down here to go swim. To go swim. To go swim. Swimming? No, fishing. <laughs> Did you uh, catch anything? No. You see, my wife was with me, and the fish took one look at her. When they saw how badly I was hooked, they wouldn't bite at all. (laughs) All right, all right. Never mind him, Costello. Why don't you go into the water? You've always bragged to me that you were such a great lifesaver. Now, come on. I am a great lifesaver, Abbott, and I'll prove it to you. I can save anybody, anybody at all. Anybody want to be saved? Anybody at all would like to be saved? Save me, save me, save me. Are you a man or a woman? Woman. How old? Fifty-seven. Anybody else want to be saved? (laughs) Never mind, the lifeguard got her. (laughs) Lucky for you. Now, now look, Costello, when you go into the water, stay close to the life boy. Stay close to the what? Uh, The boy. Stay close to the boy. That's the safest thing. Stay close to the boy. That may be the safest thing, but if you want to have some fun, you've got to stay close to the girls. Costello. (laughs) Girls have nothing to do with this kind of a boy. The kind of a boy I mean will keep you up. Well, what do you know? What is the boy's name? Uh, the boy has no name. It's just a plain red and white boy. A red... I mean, this boy is anchored to a sandbar, and it has a bell. What is that bell boy doing in a bar? No. <laughs> the boy is not in the bar. The boy is on the bar. He probably crawl up there to steal some pretzels. No, no, no. <laughs> Listen, you imbecile. That boy is on the bar to keep people from going on the rocks. So he finally learned his lesson. Why didn't his mother keep him out of that bar? This boy hasn't got a mother. <laughs> hasn't got a mother? No. That did it. What do you mean? Abbott, you have gone too far. I didn't mind when you said that the girls will have nothing to do with this poor boy. And I was only mildly surprised when you told me that he was half red and half white. I said nothing when you pushed him up on top of the bar to steal pretzels when the bartender's back was turned. But when you tell me that that poor boy has no name and no mother, you have not only besmirched the sanctity of the American home, but you have passed us. Versions on the good name of the Campfire Boys of Troop Number Thirty Five, USA, Patterson, New Jersey. Get him out of here! Uh, 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 <laughs> Lovely Connie Haynes on stage now with Will Osmond and the orchestra. Connie sings. Good, good, good. That's you, that's you. Nice, nice, nice. That's you, that's you. Fine, fine, fine. That's you, that's you. Good, good, good. That's you, that's you. Your tasty lips are sweeter than a lollipop. And every time 
I kiss you, ooh, I hit the stop. I rack my brain to find the proper adjective. A sentimental compliment to give you. Good, good, good. That's you, that's you. Nice, nice, nice. That's you, that's you. Fine, fine, fine. That's you, that's you. Good, good, good. That's you, that's you. Good, good, good. That's you, that's you. Sweet, sweet, sweet. That's you, that's you. Yum, yum, yum. That's you, that's you. Good, good, good. That's you, that's you. I never went to Cornell University. Therefore, I have a limited vocabulary. And so I use the language that I have on hand. While you were making love on my veranda. Good, good, good. That's you, that's you. Nice, nice, nice. That's you, that's you. that horseshoe. I'm going to throw it over my left shoulder and make a wish. I wish that Hedy Lamar was the head of a giraffe and I was the body. Oh, now that sounds silly. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Why should you wish that Hedy Lamar was the head of a giraffe and you were the body? I always wanted a long neck with Hedy. I... <laughs> Costello, you've got to get girls off your mind. Why don't you walk in the park at night and admire the stars? You mean like Betty Grable, Lana Turner, and Dorothy Lamar? No, 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 no. I'm talking about heavenly bodies. Brother, we're both talking about the same thing. Well, <laughs> Someday you're going to get in trouble chasing girls And you'd better keep away from that young divorcee that lives next door to you You'll never get to first base with her I did get to first base with her, Abbott Wh What happened? Her ex-husband was on second hey. <laughs> Yeah, dummy girls like her are a dime a dozen Yeah, dime a dozen? Yeah Well, here's a nickel, get me sick yeah. I think you've got women on the brain Last night in your sleep you kept hollering for Ingrid Bergman Well, Ingrid Bergman happens to be my favorite actress Since I saw her in that bathing beauty picture You saw Ingrid Bergman in a bathing beauty picture? What was it called? For whom the bath towels. I, uh, <laughs> Costello, please. Do you dream of women every night? Not every night. Well, that's better. Sometimes I take a nap in the afternoon. Uh, <laughs> Come in. Oh, there you are, you fat, impudent little slob. That's me. <laughs> yes, you. Costello, last night I dreamt that I went out with you. You did? Yes, and I've never been so insulted in my life. Take that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now, the next time I dream about you, maybe you'll act like a gentleman. How do you like that? The next time she's dreamed she's got a date with me, I ain't even going to show up. <laughs> well, Costello, I'm convinced that your dreams are the cause of all your girl troubles. And we've got to find out what they mean. Gee, I wish we could. Really, I do. I'm glad you said that, Costello, because we have with us tonight the world's greatest authority on dreams. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. I am the world's greatest dream analyst, Professor Melonhead. <clears throat> known, known professionally as Dream Boat Melonhead. Dream Boat Melonhead. Dream Boat. Looks like somebody plucked all the feathers out of your crow's nest. <laughs> hey, young man, are you trying to infer that my head is bald? Infer? If you put your head in fur, it would look like an oversized mothball. <laughs> hey, Anna, get a load of that slippery dome. I've seen ostriches sitting on better-looking things than that. No, Costello, please. And you get results. I know, I know. Please. <laughs> you, should make, you should make cracks about the professor's head. If his head ever cracks, I'll make an omelet out of it. <laughs> look, gentlemen, we're wasting time. Uh, professor Melonhead, huh? can you tell us what causes Costello to dream about girls? Of course, Abbott. Tell me, Costello, do you dream about girls all the time? No. Only when I'm asleep. You, oh, that's fine, good. Now I'll have to have a little of your case history. Do any other members of your family have peculiar dreams? Yes, my Uncle Artie Stebbins. Mm -hmm. Last night he dreamed he was pulling the weeds out of his garden. Ah, he dreamed he was pulling weeds out of his garden. What happened? When he woke up, his wife was as bold as an eagle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's get back to you, Costello. What type of girls do you dream of? Beautiful girls. Beautiful. Once I dreamed of beautiful, gorgeous blonde, and when I put my arms around her, something electric passed between us. A shock? No, she slipped her light bill into my pocket. Oh. <laughs> well, Professor... <laughs> <laughs> Pro 
Professor Millenhead, have you found out what causes Costello's dream? Well, Abbott, my superficial diagnosis tells me that Costello's dreams are caused by contraction of the nerves in his head, making his brain too tense. My brain is too tense? Yep. Two tenths the size of a normal brain. <laughs> Mill and head for two tenths, I'd suck you right in the puss. All right. Now, Costello, I will attempt to remedy your condition by massaging your head. First, I will stuff cotton into your auditory canal. Then, I will pack your cranium in cracked ice, tighten your cerebrum, loosen your cerebellum, and then I will rub horse liniment into your medulla oblongata. <laughs> wouldn't dare. <laughs> you haven't got the nerve. Oh, now, Costello, a person's equilibrium is often an important factor in the cause and effect of dreams. Therefore, I will have to test your equilibrium. Melonhead, if you as much as lay one finger on my equilibrium, I will call my mother. <laughs> no, no, no. To test your equilibrium, Costello, I want you to climb up this step ladder here and balance yourself on the top step. Go ahead. Well, it's very silly, but I'll go. Here I go. Ah, Costello is now climbing the ladder. He's up 15 feet. He's up 30 feet. Keep climbing, Costello. Now he's up 75 feet. Costello has now climbed up to 100 feet. Now. Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute, Professor. Wait a minute. That stepladder is only nine feet tall. Oh, my goodness. What a mistake. Costello! Costello, come down here at once! And that ladder is only nine feet high? Now he tells me. Oh, let me out of here. Let me at that melon head, will you? Let me at that melon head. <laughs> and now here, Bud Abbott, and Luke Costello with the final word. Mr. Costello. I think I figured out a cure for your mania for chasing girls. And I've asked Connie Haynes to give you a nice big kiss. Hey, Abbott, that ought to cure me. Go ahead, Connie. Well, pack her up, Mr. Costello, and I'll kiss you. Mm. <laughs> How do you feel now, Mr. Costello, honey? I feel fine, but that sailor in the first row just fainted. Good night, boys. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.